Extra. Affinity Extra. Be Extra. Right, guys. I'm just going to introduce this off. I'm just going to give you my heart and it, where I'm coming from and, and, and what it is now. Um, don't worry, guys. I got you in mute so you can make a couple of vouchers and shout at somebody next door and said, yo, be quiet. You know what I mean? So you can get out of the kit. You're on mute, man. So I'm just going to kick off now. I'm going to unmute everyone in a second. But first of all, let me get my, uh, my teeth in. I want to have a great conversation. A conversation which... Um, um, again, if you either listen to the show right now, watching back on YouTube, um, it's a it's a situation where um, I found myself really looking at my own personal identity over the past year um, because I grew up in a Christian Christian environment, um, which um, putting it out there is sometimes uh, if a lot of time I grew up in a black church, um, um, Afro Caribbean church, and sometimes it's very counterculture count count uh, very counter towards um culture because you know we we focus on jesus everything's jesus you know jesus above culture above everything else but what was apparent is that fact is that when i step outside the doors my culture kicks back in yeah so when i go when i go outside i'm 10 times likely to get stopped i'm 10 times i'm five times likely to be treated poorly by the mental health system yeah uh so i'm going hold on a second hold on a second hold on a second it's great talking about your jesus but you're not talking about the issues that, that are affecting people that of my color yeah and that became um a, a a grave issue for myself to this very day i think that the church hasn't done a very good job of basically talking about this area and actually handling and supporting the marginalized in that area um which are people of color not only black uh i've, I've saw many documentaries that's highlighted uh pakistani communities um, um uh, indian communities different um, diverse communities as much as they're put into the system they're getting back way less so um and this is where, the, for me, as Christians, the people who represent the people that care should should get should should talk a lot more. But there's a lot of times what I find about is is that um, we like to assume. This is part of the journey that I've taken over the past uh, year. Seen a lot of assumptions about um, black culture and putting a lot of black is isms onto me. And don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, what you got? You got? You got? Your bro, but you haven't listened to my journey. Oh, not not interested. So. Something that came up, uh, came up. Uh, I came to this um, conclusion is when I went to, uh, you know, you check up, you, you catch up with like, you know, Marie's post and whatever, and she was in. She, she went into this um, group, um, uh, a mixed group. I was like, oh boy, yeah, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> and, I, and I sneaked in. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh. For and bear in mind, the whole one side of my family is. The full-on rainbow of brown <laughs> we got from every shade around, and on one other side, I was totally opposite. Yeah, so I got my own isms and schisms anyway, still. Yeah, but but I just want to bring in my guest. First of all, I'm gonna uh, I got I got guest. I got Angela. Uh, for Angela, she's somebody who's been on the show a number of times. Who's uh, uh, um, uh, somebody who's studying um, psychotherapy, and um, she's looking at specifically into the black community and some of the things that we have does affect our mental well-being. Yeah, if you don't know who you are. It affects you, hence why black me, black. If we're gonna really, uh, I mean, black people, people of color, are struggling to plug into the church right now because they see no identity. Of it. Now we'll get into that and whatever. So that's this is this is where I'm at, and, and this is when I'm trying to I'm trying to witness to people, trying to talk to people. That you know, what I mean, but we'll. I'm, I'm, again, we'll, we'll, we'll unpack that. And I, I'm not going to assume anything on anybody else. But one thing I, I, I am seeing is basically rejecting it in my generation towards what I love. And it's Jesus Christ and the Christianity. And um, for many reasons, I can come to a conclusion is, but identity is a major part of that. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to now, let me just switch on the mics. I'm going to say, uh, introduce everybody to the system. So I'm going to check if everyone's mics are on and everything's okay. So can I have a, I'm going to try and use um, um, and the right aliases because I know everyone from different different um, versions of the names. Now I'm going to it, I'm going to go for the one I'll probably get definitely right. Um, Sandeep Louise. So what's up to uh, Sandeep to Louise because uh, she's our host for uh, Extra Hot Show. Um, so enough love to yourself, sis, man. Thanks for being here today. So that's a good smile. That means I got that right. Now this is the one I got fear of, and that's um, uh, I'm going to say Marie. 
Mo- yes, Anne Marie. Anne Marie, Anne Marie. Okay, I can say Anne Marie. I'm like, yeah, got that right. So, so it's Anne Marie um, on the show today. But anyway, no, I appreciate your time, sis, for for coming on the show. Um, also, um, I want to talk to you, uh, my, my boy Sheng. Um, um, because he got rid of the knee, um, you know, I mean, but we put we put the knee back on there, man. Every knee shall bow. Anyway, let's, 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 let's <laughs> I'll knee, I'll knee you in the head, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my boy, um, Sheng, and um, I'm gonna sp- uh, and also we've got sister Angela, um, again. Um, uh, train um, psycho psychotherapist. I like that word because it really sounds really posh and great. Yeah, but it's great to see people of color in great professions that we can have this conversation, keeping it real in your circle. Now, right, I'm going to start this beginning part first of all, just to give everybody the backgrounds of everyone in this conversation. Now, I'm going to start it off because you know, um, because I, um, I, I'm, I, I, I'm definitely more um, divided than anybody else. But anyway, it may, I believe I am. But anyway, but let me just give, give you an idea what it is. And also, what I want to do is also introduce a favourite meal on a Sunday. Usually, we have the rice and peas and jollof rice argument, but I can't have that today. Uh, <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is I'm just going in, to introduce myself and say, yo, my name is Roger Moore. My dad is uh, uh, is is Jamaican. Black um, Jamaican with African diaspora, 100%. And I heard there's a bit of Scottish in there as well. On my mom's side, it's um, it's French, um, Portuguese, and also African from so Saint Kitts, um, and um, hence why you know um, that. And, and I'm gonna break that up because that's a total weird dynamic as well for myself as well, growing up as a, uh, in in two different types of uh, uh, family uh, makeups as well. Um, so that's me. What I have on a Sunday, my favorite meal for the Sunday is a whole heap of red kidney beans with rice sweet corn and chicken that's just me on a sunday so let me hit it off i'm gonna pick on sheng what am i saying my heritage and what yeah. i like to eat on sunday yeah 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 so i'm half um black caribbean so from dominica my mom's from dominica the island not dominica republic a tiny island next to like antigua cool. and uh, my dad's from um hong kong cool cool cool, cool. and uh sunday bro gotta be like brown food like you know yams dashing sweet plantain sweet potato and like you know fried fish or something like that okay cool 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 you know what I'm saying so every, every great great face is there right now <laughs> it was going <laughs> the church is not saying amen mm-hmm. that one bro but anyway. I eat my dumplings man I eat my dumplings alright alright sorry um, at my age it probably hurt me too much so I have to cut the cut down on that anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, and Marie what are you saying man Hey, so um, my mom is from Kingston, Jamaica, and my dad is from Dublin, Ireland. And my favorite food, well, my favorite Sunday kind of dish would be, I like gungo peas and rice with um, fried plantain. And I love my roasters, okay? And what else? I think that's it. Oh, and I really like um, fried hake. I really, I enjoy my fish. I eat more fish than meat. And I will always either default to hake or um, salmon. So that's that's my my favorite Sunday meal. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're gonna um, go to Sandeep. Hi. So um, my dad's Indian. So he's from India, obviously. <laughs> and my mom is white. She's actually she's from Yorkshire. She's from um, East Yorkshire, a city called Hull. Which, funnily enough, was actually the city of culture in 2018 or 2017, which is an absolute madness. I don't know how, (laughs) (laughs) but they've come a long way. (laughs) Um, And on a Sunday, breakfast wise, I will start off with bacon and egg, right? Maybe in a sandwich, like a triple layer, maybe. And then weekends are my dad's cooking in the kitchen. So he'll make his Indian food, like chicken curry or some vegetable curry or whatever. And then that is what we'll have over the weekend. So we'll have that on a Sunday evening, probably. If I'm not feeling the Indian food, I'll just make myself some pasta and go Italian. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why <laughs> not? <laughs> oh, it's all yeah. good. Uh, no, no, thanks for that, sis. And we have to go with you, Angela. Now, Angela's, uh, I, I'm assuming, and that's a great assumption, it's going to be quite singular. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But you go for it, sis. Let's break it down, man. Yeah, so I'm Ghanaian. Um, that's just about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do have family that's mixed race. My brother is married to um, a woman who's half Japanese, half Ecuadorian. Um, 
somewhat Spanish and they live in the US. So yeah, um, mixed race. And um, my favorite food on Sundays, Sundays are pancake day. Um, once I get out of bed, whenever I see that is. And then definitely Ghana Jollof. We're not even going to argue about that, Nigerian. <laughs> it's just Ghana Jollof. Trust me, just believe it's Ghanaian Jollof. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's all. Now, that's hundred percent great. Fantastic. That. Uh, thanks for that, sis. And thanks for everyone, because I think it's important for everyone to realize that you know what's still yeah. It, it, the beauty of our backgrounds is what makes our beautiful Sunday dinner. When we sit down and we look at a dinner, and it influences what we eat. That's the day that we eat some crazy, st- some some really crazy stuff. And and you know what? I've had rice and peas. I could have rice and peas every week and feel no way. You know what I mean? You know the things and um, traditions anyway. So yeah, but. Let me go back to the subject at hand, guys. Something that, um, for me, again, I want to reiterate that I had, a, uh, like I said, I I saw the post that uh, um, Am, uh, Amu um, was going into, and I get and I gave her a call, and it and it just some of the things kind of shut me now. I assume because of my back, because I'm I'm slightly not as d- um, dark as the average, you know, um, black person. I'm um, quite light. A lot of, when I was growing up, a lot of people thought I was. Um, Oh, I was I was mixed race, and I wasn't, and I was like, no, I'm black. But I also assume, assume very easy for myself that my journey is very is exactly the same as somebody who is, yeah. Because I think like, but when I really looked down at it, I said, no, it's not. It's actually different. You know what I mean? It's actually a different type of journey. Now, um, I want to. I, I don't want to really go into the crops of things and hardcore. Now, I want to go through everyone and talk about. Um, the, I want to talk about is there is a is a side. No, okay, let's go. Let's go to this. The bad experiences. Let's be. Let's let's go go straight into it. The bad experiences that you know what I'm saying might be going straight into. And 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 I think that it's important because um, sometimes we want to focus on the beautiful the beautifulness of it, of it, a situation. I'm not here to slag off. This is not about individuals outside of this conversation. This is the, the things that people actually were scared. When I spoke to somebody and said to them that oh somebody used to touch my hair when I was a kid and said my hair was waterproof. Yeah, they was like huh? You couldn't say that. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is. You don't realize these things carry on in life, you know what I mean? And 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 and, and planes and certain things. So this is why it's kind of important for me to kind of bring that out because sometimes we repress a lot of things. We don't say a lot of things because we repress it, hold it down, and it comes out at the wrong time. Yeah. So this is a, this is this is a cool space. So listen, guys, go for it. So who wants to go first at this, or or is everyone like uh, I'm after so and so after so and so? You know what I mean? And, and let's be real because you know uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna. Have, uh, if he, everyone's listening in, yo, let's just keep it real with this anyway. So, so I'm going to pick on Sandy, man. Okay. What was the question? Uh, the, <laughs> question the, the question is just, just give us one of your bad experiences, some of the bad experiences growing up as, uh, as being mixed race and being, um, yeah, just, just be keeping it real, man. I think, I think my biggest thing being mixed race, or like my probably most negative experience of being mixed race do you know what it's what it's the first time i experienced racism and it was when i was with my mom and this is what made it so crazy because i was probably about seven and my mom was taking me and my brother and one of my cousins from america who's also mixed like me but um his mom's indian and his dad's american white and we were going to the swimming pools and as we was walking we crossed the road and someone shouted out their car look at the white woman with all the packies <laughs> And in that moment, I was like, eh? and I remember I, I I didn't really know what was happening because I was oblivious. I was so young. But I remember my mom literally holding us really tightly and just saying, look down, keep walking, look down, keep walking. Because she was like, oh, my gosh, she was just like, look down, keep walking. Like, And I didn't really understand it until later when I grew up. But that's probably mm. being a mixed race person and having a mom who's white we're not the same skin shade. I mean, I'm very pale at the moment. You know, it's been winter, so I'm the lightest I am at the moment. I'm waiting for the sun to come (laughs) and so I can get my tan on. But, you know, even little thing, it's little things like going to, when I've been to the theatre with my mum and I've gone to a show. I remember recently, actually, it was a couple of years ago before the lockdown and all this, but the last show we went to see um, at the theatre and I was the only brown person around and I was like... I need some more people up in here that are not white like but um i was with my mom and we were just walking and you know i didn't think anything of it but then i noticed i was getting looked at like a lot 
walking mm-hmm. through this crowd and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, but everyone's thinking, how are they together? Are they friends? You know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, this is normal. It's my mom. Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, absolute. Yeah. it's my normal. It's just not anyone else's normal. Those are probably wow. the more negative. Um, but also I think with me being mixed race, I've, I've been fortunate that I've grown up. My parents have given me all the affirmation I've needed to understand who I am. Mm-hmm. And good, they validated good, me good, in good. belonging and stuff like that. But there is always that thing of like, if I get in a taxi, it's a classic example. If I get in a taxi and more time they're like Indian drivers or Pakistani, they'll see my name, Sandeep Louise Bardwaj. And it will instantly strike a conversation of like, oh, are you Indian or English? Or, and I'm like, I'm both. Um, and then it, I'll have the question, do you speak Punjabi? Which is my dad's um, native tongue. And I'm like, no. And then the convo will just stop. And so there's that sense of like, mm. oh, I, I'm not enough at this point. <laughs> like, mm. you know, there's that thing of, oh, you're, you're Indian, but mm, you can't speak it. So actually, okay. Like it's not worth wow. talking anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then on the on the flip side, I've had other taxi drivers that are actually really nice and will tell me about India, and I'm like, wow, I'm learning about a country I've never been to, but yeah. need to go to. Mm-hmm. So those are probably my overall negative experiences. But like I say, I've I've definitely I've been fortunate to be affirmed in who I am, and mm-hmm. I've been given the space to explore that. Like I've had really difficult conversations with both my mom and dad to try and recon- like to ask them how do you reconcile your heritages. Because, for example, I remember watching the movie Victoria and Abdul, which came out like years ago, which was about Queen Victoria and Abdul, who's from India or something. It was to do with the Indian independence and the relations between the two. I come out so confused after watching that film. I was like, who the heck am I? Um, How the heck are my parents together? How's my dad okay with being with my mom? Coming from a line of that kind of colonialism and, and all this. And I was like what the heck and I remember I remember like asking my parents I was like I, I don't understand this like I was like dad how are you okay with this and mom like w- like how do you feel about this being like your your history like mm. and something my dad said like being Christian he was just like you know what God had a plan for us and it was just totally different he was like mm. and it's that classic thing that I think you were touching on Roger of mm. sometimes we can over spiritualize and just put Jesus above it all where actually we miss out on culture, but actually when we bring Jesus into the convo that actually he, it's actually him who puts culture here and yeah. actually he's the one who's merged these worlds together, that totally changes things because yeah. that brings the beauty of it. But yeah. um, in reconciling that, it definitely brought out some kind of frustration in me of like, I don't know how to reconcile this. Mm. And I think about like a lot of my black friends, I think well, it's crazy. How do you reconcile the history of black history that's been happening? like across the west Mm -hmm. like how do you even start like Mm -hmm. it's just mad it's an absolute madness no i've just had a rant i'm sorry (laughs) it's cool it's cool it's cool cool. (laughs) you know i think it's it's definitely no i've been talking for like 10 minutes straight i'm so sorry guys (laughs) no 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 no. it's no it's real good and that that was real 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 healthy man a healthy man um right i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna go with um obviously we gone with um, Sandy. I'm gonna go to Sheng. Yeah, um, Sheng, man. Um, if you can um, enlighten us, man, uh, some experiences, you know, that you've, that you've, you've had. Oh this man, uh, you know one. what? Might have been a bit up and down. So I've had like mm. the minor ones, and I had like some major ones. And I remember, um, I think some of the major ones, the major ones probably weren't even that bad. And I'm really thick skinned so a lot of things don't hurt me as much in it. And it's like, all right, okay. And I'm, because of the area that I've grown up in, in Birmingham. And like, um, you, they say like, you don't have to go see the world and you can, like the world's pretty much at your doorstep. There's so much culture and stuff in Brum anyway. And in the area that I live in, like so much that like, even when I walk outside, I barely even, I barely even see white people. Yeah. So I've kind of just grow, grown up in people being proud of different ethnicities and whatever. So, um, which is good. No, I guess it's made me like, like I said, thick skin, but it doesn't make it all right for some of the things that's, you know, happened to me. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I've experienced a lot of sort of racism in in Brum. I think it's more like of the kind of cities and our, our countries or whatever. Um, but I think that I start I start in Brum. The thing that, that I, I think is more like an uncomfortability. So like, um, my dad's obviously from Hong Kong, but um, he's a chef. And he's a Chinese, he's a Chinese chef, and he, they had like a, um, he, him and his family had like a a takeaway next to 
probably one of the most prolific um, Caribbean shops in the city, which is Bing's. And that's on like Lazal's Road. If you've been to Lazal's Road, that's like, you know, everything's on, on Lazal's Road. You can't find, you can probably find everything there in it. So, mm. and be like being next door to Bing's and stuff and, you know, all these other shops. And he'll take me into the shops and I'll be like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I used to get stared like at. I used to get stared at bear and it just made me uncomfortable and like you get people pointing at me like I'm some animal or something like and we're talking different languages and towards my dad. My dad had like bare black friends so I thought alright it's calm but growing up made me really uncomfortable and like I'd walk into shops with him and stuff and like it would just be quiet like everyone would stop talking and stuff and obviously like as a kid it's kind of like oh, I'm already shy as it is and now I'm like even more like do you know what I mean? Mm. I feel intimidated and stuff and I kind of grew up with a little bit of a fear towards it black people mm -hmm. but growing up and that and growing up around kids and um, my age and talking to them and you know being involved with their families and whatever I kind of just you know and even my own family my um, my black side and whatever who are really into Chinese culture weirdly um, they've kind of helped me to you know just surpass all those kind of feelings and whatnot um, uh Talk about, think, talk about experiences up outside of town, you know, when you're in university and so on, because I know you're facing yeah, a lot of stuff. So I've had some weird experiences, you know. I've had, like, I went to university in Liverpool and um, I had, like, I remember I was standing next to one of my white friends um, on the street and um, had, like, a bag of, like, white guys, like, chads and whatever, just throwing chocolate bars at me and stuff and, like, calling me monkey and that. I was like, I just laughed. I was like, really? Like, we're still doing this. Yeah. And, um, still. You know, I'm like, Come on, man. I'm, oh, I'm next really? to my, my white regin. Come on. You know what I mean? My white regin's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> and I'm all, all like, even casual racing, like, I'm sitting in a gym and there's a white guy to his other friend. He's like, yo, I'm thinking about going, to, I'm thinking about going to get a chink tonight. I was like, bro, you couldn't put two lips together and just say two syllables. Like, a Chinese, you have to say chink. I was like, is this how, like, casual would, be? all right, okay, cool. Um, wow. I've had like I remember, I remember when I was in school as well um, and I almost got into like a mad brawl um, with uh, I can't remember it was some like long distance sort of activity run thing at, outside school like some competition and I, I took part in in, in in one of the races and um, along the, I think it was because it was through like a forest we had to like run there were like people along the way that were telling us um, where to kind of go and whatnot and I think um, along the way I don't know how this happened yeah? and obviously uh, um, there's a lot of schools and whatnot so I think people thought they could just say things and get away with it while mm -hmm. people were running and someone said like a mad racist comment I can't remember what it was but it was like what and like me and all of my black friends from my school just stopped yeah. and turned and said what so we kind of like said yo you can't be saying them things and then they started like, calling us you know a nigger and stuff and you know what I mean we kind of kind of got into it and we was like we was that close to like just throwing bricks at each other and stuff like rocks it like was mm -hmm. you know what I mean and then I've, I've I've had like experiences where I've um I've been in uh I, I used to live in Newcastle for work and um I remember there was like a, a brawl that we had in a, in a club with my cousins that came up and it was for no reason at all, for no reason at all. That we were just like these uh, group of white guys just started fighting us for no reason. We didn't do anything. We were probably the nicest people in the club. I think it was one of my cousin's birthdays or something. Um, and uh, yeah, we just started going at it, man. Like just in self defense. I ain't gonna lie, man. It was, just, it was nasty, but um, I can't like this. There's, there's, there's been more. I can't really pinpoint. Uh, a lot of them make it very colourful for you like, to like kind of visualise but there's there's more and there's probably a lot more subtle racism that I could pin pinpoint out but um, mm. at the top of my head those are like the main ones that I can think about. There's not a lot from my Chinese side though. My Chinese side are blessed and I haven't really experienced a lot of uh, racism towards my Chinese side from other people outside my ethnicity as well. Um, I I've been to Hong Kong and um I remember um, they'll be like, and, and even when I go like takeaways and restaurants with my dad and whatever, they'll be like staff members that'll come up to me and speaking like Mandarin or Cantonese and they'll be like, yeah, and I can tell they're talking about me, in it, but it's just like that, that, the language barrier itself is sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it's like my own yeah. fault for lack of, um, or 
mm. parents' fault for lack of education yeah, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Get that one. And yeah. it kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? It might, it might have stumped my growth a little bit in that area, but mm. um, it does kind of get to you sometimes. Like when you, when everyone's speaking different languages, my mom speaks mm. French and my dad speaks um, Cantonese. And I, like they'll speak to their like family mm. members or whatever. Mm. And I'll be like, mm. I remember everyone's got that, everyone's got that time where they get put on the phone to one of their family members and they're like speaking harsh accents or or different languages that I, my nan never spoke a word of english and I, um when she was there she used to like speak to me i'd be like oh hi oh, yeah yeah something about dim sum i don't know you gotta wow. translate that that i don't know what she just said wow wow you know it, what but i'll say one more thing like go, go, go. I've, been to, I've been to the caribbean as well and um I remember one of my first experiences over there was like all the kids running up to me and they're like, boy, look a Chinese boy, boy, look a Chinese boy. And he used to be pulling my ears and pulling my hair and I was like, yo, I don't understand this, man. Did they like me or did they hate me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was just a funny experience. Like, to now, I don't even understand that, but I think it's just a playful thing. I hope anyway, but yeah, those are some of the experiences that I've had. Yo, bro, that, that is big. And you know what, bro? The thing is, you're not 48 talking like that. You, some of the experience that you had there, people thinking that you should be 48, 49. Bro, you, you barely passed 25, bro. Yeah? And you experience things that people said don't happen anymore. That actually hurts, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And this is and this is real talk, bro. And you you don't say, you don't tell nobody, you don't bla- put that on blast. You don't put Instagram pictures about all your experiences and whatever there, bro. But you just kept that in. You said you're thick-skinned. But, bro, whatever goes in comes out at some point yeah you know what i'm saying so my encouragement is bro yeah i know it's not the man thing yeah but sometimes it's good to get that space to get the yo bro because it's get, it, keep it real but bro bless man that's blessed sorry amory yo let's hit, hit, hit some experiences um so i'm kind of similar to sheng are we yeah yeah, sheng, I'm yeah. Is, um similar to sheng because i have grown up in a very diverse um area and community my school was diverse um however there was always so when i started school so i've said this pre, uh, before i haven't i didn't i did not see color as controversial as that may sound i did not see color when i was in primary school when i was in junior school it was these people are your friends and that's just that like you just these are your friends you've had them the whole time of your 10 years of life so you know and then when i moved to secondary school i noticed that there were um there were people that looked similar would be together so then you'd have all the chinese together the vietnamese together the black people together the whites together like everybody kind of had their click but everyone that looked similar and i'm that's when in year seven i was like hold on a sec everyone looks familiar like but but the set of friends that i was with i had indian friends because I had like one of them that came from my uh, junior school and we just, it was just me and my Indian friends and it was great. Um, But then you start to see gaps in what you can relate to with each other. So when they're talking about, when we're talking about different experiences at home, um, I could not relate and they could not relate. There was always that kind of barrier. So then it was just like, okay, uh, Who's going to understand what I'm talking about when I'm saying, when I wash my hair, it takes ages. My mom has, you know, she, she's been detangling it. I've got to put all these lotions in it, all these conditioners. They don't, they, they could not relate. And that's okay. But it just meant that I, I was like, okay, I need, I need a little bit more because I need something more to talk about that I can, you know, it's more homely. So then I started hanging out with a lot more black girls because they knew about the hair situation. They knew about how your moms will cook certain foods and what it tastes like. They were listening to the same music that would get played at home that I like to listen to as well. Cool. So then that natural transition of me having my Indian friends went to chilling with a lot of black girls instead. And I had a mixed race best friend as well. So then in a relatable sense, it just it just made more sense. We had a lot more to talk about because when we're talking about upbringing, Okay. When we're talking about things that are uh, Jamaican, um, anything like that, I was able to relate to them a lot more. And then so mm. that's how that kind of um, like married up. The interesting thing um, was that when you kind of embrace yourself and your whole authentic self. Now, for me, I could 
just talk normally like this and then I can switch in like on and off with Patois mm. casually. Now, I'm, I wouldn't do it in this setting. Yeah. But when I'm comfortable with people, I speak a lot of Patois. So I did a song um, that kind of had like Patois in it. And I, I heard a few people um, make some comments um when mm. i was saying that you know i'm just gonna have fun with this and just do it because yeah. it's part of my heritage mm -hmm. i had a couple of interesting things said like yeah but you're not black why are you why are you trying to speak patois why are you trying you sound stupid and i'm just like whoa hold on a second okay wow. you have your opinion but it's almost like saying i don't have a right to be embracing m me it, it, wow. that's how it comes off um, another thing would be when I was, so when we was like doing our gel pieces, so <laughs> during school, it's probably like the early 2000s and um, we used to do all these gel pieces and you had the fringe and yeah, yeah. it's just, you got all the swells happening and then yeah. you had like your diamond socks that would go over the knee when you go into school, you know, and it was just all, all of that. And um, my cousin used to braid my hair in amazing patterns. Like you couldn't even follow these with your finger. And I remember one time someone must have said something to me. And then my comeback, whatever I said was sharp. Now I'm not a, the type of person, like I'm not gonna be um, screaming out profanities or anything mm, like that. Okay. But if I, if I say something, it's mm -hmm. gonna be kind of it's diplomatic, but in a way that it's like, oh, she, oh, she said that. Yeah, but yeah. it's not rude or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So my comeback when we was in school, remember it's a school setting, it was strong. The comeback, the the, the um, what the person turned around and said to me was, "Why are you acting black? You're not black." And then it was kind of like, hey. a, you know, when you're in that moment, like, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. actually have it. I what am I supposed to say to that? Everything else you can say to me, I have a comeback, but now you're coming after wow. who I am. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I embrace all, all aspects of me. Mm. And it's like, am I allowed to? So then it's like, okay, wow. do I need permission to em like embrace my blackness? Do I need permission to embrace my whiteness? Come on. Because I'm both. I'm a whole human being. I am both. Mm. And I think that's kind of what, the um it's part of the ignorance with it because people maybe people aren't it's like when you see um somebody who's white you kind of put a stereotype on them this is what they like to eat this is what and blah 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 and we all do it naturally you just yeah. put the stereotypes on people and you kind of group it because it makes sense to you logically you'll be like okay you know how does this make sense how does this fit but when you have someone that's mixed um, or multi heritage you don't there's no box for them because mm. the experience mm. and mm. the mix of cultures mm. and everything, mm. it's completely different mm. in, yeah, in yeah. every different way. So it's yeah. just like, I do feel like people, when they don't know where to put you or a box to put you in, then it's just like, okay, I'm gonna, I can choose to be mean and play on that in a yeah. negative way. Okay, cool. Or I can just accept you for who you are. Crazy. Now, great. Now, uh, guys, that, just having this, 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 just bringing these, these stories, uh, you know, people are just making a few comments and they're loving the conversation that, that's happening. And it sounds kind of so simplistic, guys, but it's so enlightening because we have so many assumptions as human beings that people know your experience. They don't know your experience until you talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, Angela, I, I want you to, I don't know if you've got any points to, to, um, to, to jump into some of the things that you've, you, cause I see you nodding your head going, yo, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Is it anything you want to point out? Then I want to, I want to, I want to really look at, um, how, because this is a gospel station. This is the Christian station. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we had to show is I want to look into how we have or have not supported the situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? The situation at hand. Uh -huh. And I want to look at what what can happen as well what needs to happen yeah uh -huh. um but what from from all our suggestions and what we're talking about but i want to touch into that sorry Angela, is there anything you you see so far uh, mm. i i just i'm just mad that you have to go through all of this yeah <laughs> and wow. knowing that the microaggressions and the racism you've had to face are not just from one side they may be from both sides and when Chang was talking about not being able to relate to the language, the language barrier also being a problem. And mm -hmm. um, I felt him a little because I'm from my, my mother, my mother and my father are from two tribes in Ghana that don't intermarry. 
So, um, I mean, I'm not mixed race or anything. I mean, I, if I say I can relate to what you're saying, I'll be the biggest lie on earth. I, I won't say that. But I could, I could sort of empathize with the, I don't know whose side I'm on. And I'm from Ghana, but I don't speak any Ghanaian language very well. And I live in a different part of Ghana that speaks a different language. And my, my parents just spoke English just so that, yeah, we could just flow. Just speak English and go along. Don't worry what anybody says. And people, people are like, do you speak Chi? And I'm like, no, do you speak Ewe? No, you're not Ghanaian. I get that, you know. So I can't even begin to imagine what it feels like to be from, you know, how people react to you this way because um, of the love that brought you together. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it was love that brought you into the world. And I'm just thinking about when yeah. I said that to you, I told my brother I was going to talk about this. He was like, you should have... I should have called his wife to ask her a few questions, but I just had a really crazy, so I've not been able to, but she's like, the first thing Erica will tell is that there's a lack of identity. You don't know what side you're on, because her father is from Japan, her mother is from Ecuador, and her mother, who is from Ecuador, has Spanish and French and native Ecuadorian blood. And then she comes to America, and then she marries a black man <laughs> who is from a culture where he is not seen as Ghanaian. And then their kids are, you know, all this, you know, these different races. And my father used to say they have a mini United Nations in their house, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. But I mean, I'm just, I'm just really thinking about it in the sense that for me, it was, it has never been an issue of where do people come from or who are they getting married to or, you know, who are they with? It's just been an issue of love them. Mm. That's that. And mm. when Marie says she doesn't speak color, that's sort of been it for me because my family has always been so open minded that I wouldn't react the same way uh, another Ghanaian person will react to seeing a mixed race person or a black person will say, in Ghana, they'll say you're a brony if you're mixed race. Um, so they're all white. So you're just a brony. But I'm just thinking about how all the mixed race schoolmates I had, whose parents were Russian, half Russian, half Ghanaian, you know. <laughs> what they've had to go through and the kind of experiences and this is all really new to me and it's, it's very fascinating so i'm just going to sit back and listen yeah. um and know that i'm going to be there as well because i'm like a single Ghanaian girl who comes to school in the uk everybody's asking you first thing have you found a white boy and these are things i'll have to think about you know these are things i'm going to have to begin to think about if i'm going to be in these circles and be in this country you know and sort of understand the dynamics of things so i'm just going to sit back and listen <laughs> okay okay no no that, that that's totally blesses now um um guys no, thanks for that um, um angela and and something we, we you mentioned about identity guys yeah now um and Marie, you are straight in like yo i'm the best of these i'm the you, you're looking at both you look you're not even looking at both it's not about size for yourself you are a grip mm-hmm. and something you said there and i have to say it out loud because i've heard it said it yeah and mm-hmm. black people we still we, you know what I mean? i've seen and I've, I've looked left and i looked right yeah and i've heard we i say we uh we've said mm-hmm. it is like but they're not black but you know what i mean um and now I'm like this, but hold on a second. You know when you you fill out the details, I was like, but 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 but, but, but isn't it part of the details afterwards? You know when you got the equality thing was on whatsoever. Now um, for Amui and and um, Sheng, um, here's the question: Do you see yourself as being black? Sheng, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, do you know what I, I do because um you know because i'm a mom like i do but I also it's like I, I i identify as what i need to identify as so um i've i've culturally and obviously my skin type my hair and whatever like i it takes off a lot of you know um from my mom and whatever so there's like bits some there's half and half of both my, my mom and my dad so i have to identify as black i have to and because of the way i've been brought up and culturally who i've been around what um the foods i like and all that stuff all that kind of stuff even the, the way i speak yes i would say yeah if you're talking about on paper and who i identify as to the police and stuff and then probably yeah probably still be ic free um 
it's a it's a very 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 detailed question you know but yeah i do identify as black but also i'd, I'd say and like there's a there's a lot of like stigmas and whatever on you know how you should or whatever pronoun or whatever it is you need to use to call people that are mixed race or do you even call them mixed race do you call them dual heritage do you call them half caste whatever i've never been offended by any of those like kind of terms but i i, I, I would still identify as you know a spit down the middle like i am mixed or dual heritage or whatever okay cool no 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 no, no that, that that's that's that, that, that's sweet you know um um and we um i'm gonna hit um Sandy, have a different total question. So get ready, get ready to have Sandy. Um, Anne Marie, what are you saying? Um, I identify myself as being mixed race. I always have, and I always will. Um, mm. Part of the logic behind that for me would be, if I was to identify as black, I'm neglecting my Irish side. I do okay. not want to neglect cool. any part of me, nice. and that's how I understand it, and that's how mm. I see it. Mm. So I will embrace all sides. And I will not identify with just one. Um, yeah. And I know that different people, depending on, because like the American mixed experience is very different from the UK. Okay. And a cool. lot of Good. mixed race um, individuals in, the, in America, um, because of the whole one drop rule, yes. they're kind of more so, they see themselves as black because they're, it's literally like, they're going to see you as black anyway because you've got black in you. Mm. But that's not the kind of mentality that I wish to live by. Okay. And for me, as a mixed individual, I embrace both, and I will. I'm, I'm mixed race. Beautiful. Yeah. No, no, that, 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 that's that, that's hundred percent beautiful. Now, well, what's uh, the uh, one drop rule? Is that okay? Basically, uh, that. basically, any piece of brown, uh, any, any any piece of uh, brown sugar in your buff, you're <laughs> you're black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, um, and you know, um, that's that. That's my in, uh, perception of it, anyway. Still, yeah. Um, what but, if you got like any sort of black in you? Then you. They it's class it with black, yeah, that's black, basically yeah. what it is. So right, as right. As you're, if you've got any part of anything else, like if you've got a little bit of black in you, then you're black. It doesn't yeah. matter how much, then, oh, you're, okay. black, then yeah. you're gonna get classed as black. White yeah, yeah, yeah. white. I think that's a very poor yeah. mentality to have. And that kind of helps to segregate people anyway in regards to society. It shouldn't be yeah. if you're if like if you're mixed with this, then you get cast over there. No, that's not what it is. Yeah. Wow. By the way, um, when I'm when I'm saying as well, like when I'm saying like I, I do identify as black and I do I and I identify as mixed race, I also do identify as being Chinese. Like if people come up to me, mm -hmm. like everyone's wearing face masks now, isn't it? and obviously mm -hmm. my eyes are very very slanted. So when I'm working and stuff, and, and people are coming to me, I work and whatnot. They don't, and because of where I'm working, it's like freezing and stuff, and it, and I'm wearing a hood, so you can only just see this. People are coming. Like, <laughs> I had like about three, four people come up to me and I'm like, "Yo, we didn't know you were black as well. We thought you were just Chinese." I was like. Well, I am, but I'm also this. So, uh, but yeah. it's like I identify yeah. as like all three kind of like. But I, I never like like Amory says like I don't want to neglect any other part of me in it. So. Mm. No, no, that, that's blessed. You know what I'm saying, um, uh, hundred percent. Because, like I said, certain elements of a of 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 of, of, of us um, kind of like. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. There, I, I totally agree with you guys, man. I'm, uh, guys, I'm learning as I'm going along, you know, because I'm like, he's gone because mm, I don't talk. To my, I got cousins that are, 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 are mixed as well, and I'm like, I talk to them a certain way, but I just treat them as black. I, I'm probably influenced by American in that way, where I'm like, it's yo, we are family, yeah, yeah. So that's just me, but not really realizing that. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's 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 where it is. Now, Sandy, now you are um, obviously the one that isn't got any black in yourself you got indian and you've got english yeah you know what i mean so for me that's a no, that's another type of different type of experience yeah now i want to go more to the church's side because i know your dad's a kind of like a um, um, um pa and a pastor side of things now now looking at indian culture you know it's seen as a heathenistic um uh society because of obviously kids and the see okay it's so nothing to do with christianity do you, ha do you have you had any kind of like um has that been a bit of a hurdle for you for if we're probably ignorant people around you when it comes to the indian side it's almost a case of you have to not even associate to any you can't wear you, um indian costume um, costumes and whatsoever is it a case of okay you gotta look like an english I'll a, a nice, superhero costumer yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> all, all this business now so how do you embrace all that 
Yeah, it's an interesting one. So, like, for example, I mean, I will gladly wear an Indian dress. Okay, I look good in them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I'm little, so it's harder for me to find a nice Indian dress because sizes, oh, if you go to an Indian shop, right, to try and find Indian dress, it's in, I hate the experience of it because it's so, it takes me so long to find a dress that fits me. Cool. It's always got to be altered or I've got to look in the kids section and my pride gets knocked and it's just horrible. Oh. But, when I got it, oh, going, you get it for cheaper. <laughs> it is, that's the truth, right? <laughs> the Indian side of us, it's like, hey, it's cheaper, so go for it. <laughs> my pride, you know. But um, so you know, when we go to weddings and things like that, I'm, I'm like, we were just saying with my family, we miss going to Indian weddings. Like we haven't had okay, one in cool. so long, and Indian weddings just go off. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the, with the, yeah, with the Christianity side of it, I mean, for me, I've not experience hurdles in that sense good but if you were to speak to my dad his experience would be totally different because when he first became christian he was 21 and you know it was actually a black lady it was his sister's midwife that invited him to go to church he went to church with her because he'd always been interested in faith and stuff like that um and when he went to church he heard the gospel message for the first time and his family from a Sikh background and he accepted the Lord straight away. He was like, whoa, I need this in my life. He was like totally just taken aback. Mm-hmm. Was had his head in the Bible for the next few weeks or whatever. Mm-hmm. Totally changed, like completely. But at that point, his family kicked him out of the house because they were like, what the hell happened to you? Like, you know, that's it. You're gone. Get gone. Like, got kicked out of the house. But what happened with my dad was his experience was that actually when he looked at the teachings of Jesus and it says to love one another, uh, love your enemies as well. He put that into practice and he just, he, he prayed for his family constantly and all of that. And years later, he went back to his family and um, they let him back in the house and stuff like that. And from, they saw the change in him. They saw the transformation that Jesus can make in someone's life. And all of his family, my grandma, my grandpa, um, all of his siblings except one, all came to the faith Wow! through his life. Like, all of the, the the one who didn't marry the Sikh, so uh, you know, game over. But it, all the others <laughs> came to play, <laughs> which was amazing. Um, Amen. And so you can see the the power of the spirit in that mm. of how God was like, okay, mm. there was a purpose and something happening there that was mm. way bigger than mm. my dad ever imagined. Mm-hmm. And my dad's journey. See, my dad would be the best person to get on this call. But mm. speaking of my dad's journey, mm. he he leads the church in Bilston, where I'm from. Okay. And he pastors the church. Now, on the side of the church, he also runs a centre which helps people into employment. Um, and with this work, he has to work with people in the council and things like that. Now, in like the 90s and the 2000s, he has had so many battles rate of racism and not being able to have, not having the funding that they should be given for the work they're doing. And, mm. you know, this lack of equality. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got battles now with the work they're doing because there's still inequality happening mm. between different groups and things like that. That's and money it. not being distributed well. Um, but, you know, he's that's his experience. Mm. Now, for me to hear that, it makes me really sad because I just think I look at my dad and I'm like, Superman. But like, he's had the struggle of having to make this life from a little village in India coming here having to start this life, you know, from the age of 12, when he came, he had to be his parents' translator to even help them navigate through the country. Mm. Um, So the struggle's been more for him and the hurdles he's had. Now his Christian faith though, and like for us, like when my dad started the church, him and my mom, okay, I've got to tell you a story here. When my mom met my dad, this is a madness, right? They met, my mom's from Yorkshire. She comes from a council estate culture, um, Hull in East Yorkshire. Now, my mom met my dad when he was in his last two weeks of Bible college in Birmingham. And she happened to get someone paid for her because she couldn't afford it to come and visit that college for these two weeks randomly. So she ended up coming along. That's where she met my dad. She actually thought he was Mexican because my dad had this massive Michael Jackson afro. Oh, wow. I do question if he's full Indian, to be honest. I'm like, dad, what's your, what's your DNA, man? Afro. <laughs> 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 Uh, which is where I get my curls from. But my parents met and, you know, they fell in love, whatever, got mm. married mm. Um, and they went straight into running a church. They went straight into ministry. They were like, you know what, this is what we both want to do. And that was their journey together. Mm. 
Now, what was amazing was my dad's, the community he'd come from, the Sikh community, was the, the was exactly the world at that time that he was going to be imparting the gospel to. And my mom joined him in that. So they, they pioneered the first church, which was the Asian Evangelical Church. And it was purely for Indian people. Um, it was for anyone, but it was predominantly Asian people that would go. Um, and in Wolverhampton, you see pockets of Indian communities that are yeah, like, yeah christian indians going crazy for the lord it's amazing mm. um and so that's how the church began because that was where the need was and my mom this is the interesting story there was an there was a church they visited and there was some indian person at the front playing an indian instrument which was a harmonium mm. it's like where you push the wind and you pray that you play the piano and it, it makes a nice sound yeah. now my yeah. mom when she was a kid she saw one of these in a shop randomly and she was like, mom, dad, can I buy this instrument? I don't know what it is, but I just really want it. So when she ended up in this church with my dad, she looked at that instrument. She was like, I can play that. And my dad's like, what? what? <laughs> like, you're telling me you can play my, like, my culture yeah. instrument? Like what? And she ended up doing the music and stuff like that. Like, wow. so the way in which, and this is the crazy thing, like, and you know what I just love? God brings worlds together for a reason because oh, I get to yeah. I get to be the offspring of that beautiful union right there. On, I'm right. the offspring yeah. of that, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, it comes with confusion. Like like I identify with what Anne Marie was saying about like at school, you've got the different groups of people, you've got like the the white friendship groups, you've got the Indian girls and you've got um the black people. I was always with the black people. Like my, my friendship groups are all mixed now, but predominant, like my best friend from school is black and we are, we have been friends for about 15 years, like going wow. strong, like, okay. and you know, we, we are, it's just, cause I couldn't, if I was ever with a group of like, say Indian friends or Indian people, I would fit in and then there would be a cutoff point. It's like, I'd, I'd time myself. How long can I last here before there's something happens or someone says something, I'm like, I'm out yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't take long. Because as soon as they start talking about, I don't know, speaking Punjabi or something, I'm out. And mm. same if I'm with a completely, don't get me wrong, I've got a group of white friends at the moment, which are wonderful people. And, you know, we we share faith in Jesus, which is amazing. Definitely. But I always know that I'm the only brown one. And I'm oh. always on edge of like, who's going to make an awkward comment? <laughs> like, who's yeah. going to do yeah. the accent yeah. first? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you just yeah. naturally yeah. have that on edgeness about it. Um, so I... I've had hurdles in some senses of the word, but mm. I've just, I've had, my mom's always said to me, like, Sandy, you're the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And, and she, she's always, she, she calls me like 50, 50 whole bread, bread, you know, bread. Oh, <laughs> 50, 50 bread days. is the best of both oh. worlds. Oh, wow. <laughs> she said that to me, you know, and like, it's actually carried me through with my race, like genuinely, but actually yeah. I've had to remind myself, Sandy, you belong where you are, as you, you are. are. Mm. And and that is who you, it's who it's exactly what Anne Marie was saying. It's who you are. It's who you created to be. And right. there's nothing wrong with it. So don't think there is. But there will come the points where you feel a bit uncomfortable, mm. or you feel a bit. In, I feel there's a lot of times where I can be in a group of people and I feel very inferior, particularly mm. in a white crowd. Naturally, okay. I will just feel inferior. Right. So and I d I don't quite know where that comes from. I think, I think it's a sense of. I know that media doesn't represent Indian people in a serious way. Yeah. Oh, which is oh, where I think I won't be taken seriously. No, Sandeep, oh. uh, okay, that's a great point. I'm going to appeal it because I had a conversation with, uh, with Anne-Marie, which is going to pitch into yeah. this really well. Um, nice. Something that you just said that um, it's, uh, you seem to only seem to be, and this is important for... Um, and we're not, this is not about English bashing at all. Far from no, it, guys. No, this is, this no. is about people Absolutely. hearing how mm. people feel. Because if you're if people are Christians, we'll get this conversation and they get, oh, I never looked so it was like that, yeah? Now, yeah. Anne-Marie, you said um, something similar to me the other day when we were talking on the phone and I was dumbstruck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you, when you, when you spoke about you, in terms of defending your colour was only in a certain environment and, and, and Sandeep said that the one way it pushes her was in the same English I'm going to say English because you know um, yeah because white is diverse within itself, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. my nan, my nan would never associate herself to English. Trust me, she's Portuguese. She's like, I am not English. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, so that's that's something that my nan always. I never forget that from my nan. Um, but Amory, something that you pointed out to me, if you can bring that into this conversation about defending um, your color in in the different environments. 
Yeah, so when the whole um, George Floyd situation happened, there were a couple of incidents where I was well, I was supporting a lot of my black peers, my black family, because at the end of the day, mm. if they're hurting, I'm hurting. Yeah, man. If they're happy, I'm happy. Mm. You know, if they're struggling, mm. I feel like I'm struggling too. What can I do to help? What can I do to support? Yeah. Um, so in, in like in kind of like the black sphere, should I say, um, it's like a it's it's fine, it's okay. Like I'm there to support. I feel what you are feeling. Mm. When it comes to um English and it's not all English people. No, it's not, it's not no, all yeah, English yeah, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. but it's just particular pockets of individuals. And maybe it's just the ignorance, the lack of research and whatever else or the privilege. Um, but I've found myself having to defend my black peers. And I would see that as I'm defending myself because that that's me. Yeah, I'm having yeah. to defend myself yeah. in particular circles. Yeah. And I don't have to defend being white as such, being like any like my Irish side. I've, I'm not in circles where I have to defend that. Yeah. But I'm okay. in circles where sometimes um, like an awkward thing will pop up, like a question or, or an assumption or microaggressions mm. and they'll pop up and I kind of have to nip it in the bud. And it's very awkward because everyone's like, oh, maybe that touched a nerve or yes, it did. Your ignorance is <laughs> please educate yourself because this is not OK. And that's how you see a lot of um, groups, even like in the media campaigns and different things like that a lot of big companies will slip up doing silly things because there's lack of representation on their boards, in their executives, um, in all of those kind of higher managerial positions. Because if they had somebody that was in those positions, they mm. would say, you know, this is racist, right? You, you yeah, can't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can't. Yeah, so it's it's yeah. it's that. And um, I just want to point on um, something that Sandeep said is you belong. Like you should always feel, listen, if they're, I don't know how many mixed um, dual heritage or multinational people are here listening, but you belong. Absolutely. If you don't take anything from this conversation, just mm. know that you belong. It doesn't matter mm. where you are, where you're placed, you belong. Don't ever feel like you don't. Yeah. You belong. You have a right to be there and you have a right to embrace all sides of you. You belong. I just wanted to say that because that really resonated with me. Yeah. No. And you... Sorry. Sorry. Go actually on. just that came to my mind because mm -hmm. we're talking about christianity as well mm. if you think about jesus right i'm oh, pretty sure if you want to get in with like being dual for anything jesus right. knew what it was to be dual something he was fully <laughs> man, and he was fully god uh, in one like okay, okay. so when people want to i'm just i've got, I've got to say that because i've been in churches particularly mm. Um, I've been in Church of England. I was at a Church of England church once. It was a wonderful church. Wonderful people. Yeah. Really mm. spirit-filled. Mm. Love the Lord. We're doing great work for him. There was one instant when I first started going. <laughs> the lady, she meant well. I know she meant well. She just didn't know. And she said, mm. the first thing she said to me, she's like, oh, we have an Indian family that comes here. We'll have to connect you with them. Oh, wow. Oh, like, yeah. 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 Please don't, because I know I'm not going to identify with them. I'm half Indian. I'm not full. I'm not gonna it's wow. not gonna be a good experience. I was like, don't do that. But I was like, oh okay, great, great, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you know, yeah. I, I think you even get that as an African person coming to the UK. They're like, oh, we know a couple of African people that are yeah. from Zimbabwe and they're from Gambia, and I'm like, I do not. <laughs> it's like okay yeah. i'll know as much about them as you yeah. do right the intentions are there the good intentions that, are there yeah, but yeah it's not really <laughs> fitting you know the jigsaw's not make it's not you know yeah, yeah, but, it's yeah. the wrong piece isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> the intentions are there so no, that's uh, no yeah. uh, what, guys 100 this is, this is absolutely fantastic i think that you know i want to look at um growing up in church now Sandeep you, it's, it's, it's interesting that you, you know me your dad's uh, a pastor and that input that you had there um uh, uh Amri is smiling because she knows she can say the same thing as well <laughs> dad's a pastor as well I'm a PK too you know, he's, 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 okay I'm a PK so we've got pure okay. PK oh, uh, uh, right. as, as for uh, Nelson and his house, <laughs> Sheng, uh, but but no. Um, on on a, on a real note, um, to yourself, Sheng, um, to, to yourself now, uh, kind of you know. I know you grew up in the church environment. You, you've done the BCC, um, the black the black church, and so on like that. Still, yeah. And growing up, yeah. How 
being half, did the, you know, when you mentioned that they were kind of making you know that you're half Chinese, did you feel like they made you know that you were Chinese, Chinese, or did you feel that it was a really comforting place? Now, what should happen is that everyone should be just here, relaxed, going, oh, I'm welcome here. No one's, no one's, no one's looking at me and going, I look different. No one's separating me into little, 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 little cell groups that are culturally centered or whatever they are. So yeah, that's what should be happening in in church because everyone's like, yo, we are one. And always, busy. but did you have that growing up in in a church in Violet Shane, going to Sunday schools, or what? Or was it an obvious thing that you were? different oh you felt really welcome i'm just asking the question i'm not telling you what it is but you, you, you let me know from your experience um I, do you know what when it comes to like especially being in england um haven't really had a lot of racism or sort of negative connotations thrown at me um based on because i was i was chinese or anything and i think growing up in like a church like bcc where it's heavily multicultural and they've got Go different on. societies in that church mm-hmm. as well like mm-hmm. not societies that's is that a good word to use? But you know, like yeah. different kind of, you know what I mean? Like they have a Brazilian yeah, community yeah, 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 or yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. them things there. Like, yeah. like uh, I, I, I felt accepted anyway. And because I was around a lot of multi, you know what I mean? Heritage sort of people, it kind of just made me feel comfortable. Anyway, no one really ever brought up my heritage unless they were like intrigued about learning more or watching nice. like, oh, okay. Nice. So I haven't really dealt with that too much. Yeah. I think in general, like, on a, um, well, I can I can say that, and like me and you play for uh, Clarendon, like a, a <laughs> proper well, we Jamaican-based got... football team, isn't it? Jamaican. and um, <laughs> you know, like most of the men in there don't even know my name. They're like, "Yo, China, China boy, China." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. yeah they, yeah. they don't know my name, did they? <laughs> for years, they yeah. haven't known my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. I've just gone along with it, and that could be classed as like a microaggression, but because I'm just like, I I more look at the heart of people in it, and I know that like they're not. You know, they're not trying to bully me or they're not trying to... It's mm. just like, you know, in Jamaican culture, that if you're if you're like, you know, if you got big feet, they'll probably call you Bigfoot or if you got long hair, yeah. they'll be like, you know, <laughs> long hair boy or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like, like, China boy, like, yeah, China boy. I'm like, I get it. I know you're not trying to be rude or anything, but yeah. it's, it's hilarious. And to other people, it might be like, what? Do you let them call you that? I'm like, don't worry, man. I know the heart behind it, so it's cool. So uh, it's kind of like it's having mm. that understanding between people. And I know like it's like Sandeep saying, um, you know, like um, that woman at the church, um, the, um, church she went to, she was like, oh, yeah, there's an Indian family that come here. The person didn't really any like malice behind it. She's, yeah. she's trying to like, make you feel comfortable in the church and whatever. But it's like, you don't have to do that, you know. It's all right. Yeah. You yeah, can yeah. just, you know. I'll gravitate if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If yeah. I need to, thanks for letting me know they were there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, Marie, do you have, like, do you guys ever have anybody asking you they can touch your hair? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Check, I'm so sure your hair's longer than mine now. <laughs> no, I've, tie, I've, tied, I've tied it up twice in it, so it's like, sort of. Oh. <sighs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit messy at the moment. That's why I got my hood up. So <laughs> I don't, I don't get strangers asking. I've had people ask, um, like in school and stuff, but I just kind of put that to curiosity. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but I think it's it's all about boundaries when it comes to that because some people might find it highly offensive. Like I'm not a petting zoo, but if yeah. you genuinely just want to touch and understand the the texture of my hair, mm-hmm. so, yeah. if I know you and I know that's where you're coming from. I'm happy to help, but I'm not a pet mm. zoo, so don't put your hand in my hair. If you have not asked permission, you need permission. Yeah. So it's coronavirus. Coronavirus. Yo, mask it up, mask it up. I see a lot. Of, I see a lot of girls, especially like coming out with the um, the shower cap things, looking the bonnets and that, and it's so. all. Oh yeah. Mm. So obviously, is that, is that like a new, new rave or something? No, they, they, they should always like because you put stuff in your hair, and then if you when you put stuff in your hair and you go to sleep, that same conditioner and lotion is gonna go into your pillow, go into your face. So it's better you. Oh. No, I've actually. Protective. I've recently just bought a bonnet for my hair because I got into <laughs> hair and I've had breakouts or spots, and I've been thinking, yeah, where, where have I been yeah. getting these from? And I've been trying everything. I was like, this is ridiculous. I know it's mask wearing and stuff like that because they're all here. But I was like, maybe it's my hair because yeah, I use yeah. for my hair, and I was like, yeah. it's my hair. And I bought myself a silk pillowcase too. 
Yeah. 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 But but listen guys, yeah. this 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 is the mixed race experience. Their 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 hair the hair does 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 it does, 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 does extreme things that we we just don't. Uh, as you can see, my hair my hair has extreme ways. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do oh, you don't you like I, I barely know anything about I've got long hair and I don't I, don't, I barely know anything about hair safe. But if you want to get into a conversation about hair, but these ladies will keep us here for another two hours. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but, but guys, I've I've, 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 I've got Next a question. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a great question, yeah? Now, somebody's hitting me up as a girl. There's a young lady that who is, uh, who's actually from the, she's around about age, same age as me. Well, I say young lady, but same age as me. She's um, half, half, half Indian. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. I'm half Indian, uh, 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 I believe half in- English. And she said that she's, had, I'm going to put that, she's had experiences going to black, black churches and they're almost treating like she's not, a Christian, like she's visiting, and all that. Like, right, she's not Christian, and, and and she's had her experiences. And here's a flip side now, yeah. I've now she mentioned about um on on on, on the on, um, George Floyd and the Megan situation now, yeah. Now Megan is mixed race, yeah, and um, I I've heard people say. Well, she ain't black, you know what I'm saying? And there've been a lot, a lot of black people that that that's been vocal about the scenario, yeah. Now, uh, uh, I'm like, that's a bit harsh still because the reality show is that for me, she is black and she is, you know, like 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 people mentioned before, and she, she's she's best of both sides as we have mentioned in this conversation, um, and she's affected by. The racism of a black side um and and prejudice onto a side and and for me now i'm looking at this and there's been a major link and why um angela is 100 percent to this conversation as well is there's a major link that there's um gro- there's been a stigma but i've i've heard a lot in the past six seven eight years in care that we'll find more mixed race children in um in the mental health si- situation because of it um um or what that um you know but again i know as a black man they say a lot of things about black people but actually not quite true now yeah. um for yourselves can you see that being a reality living your life thinking hold on a second because you guys sound like you know your mom and your dad but there's situations when you don't know your mom and you don't know all your dad you know what i'm saying um could you see a struggle in yourself if you was just had input from one side has the input from both sides been crucial for your own stability because i'm i'm talking to some strong people sandy strong and we strong sheng you're good you talk about you're walking and chilling with your dad imagine one not being there yeah oh uh, go on shout out who wants to go on that i i i feel like yeah i i can't imagine reconciling who i am without my parents input particularly my dad because he's been the one who's experienced such extreme racism from being an immigrant in the 60s and with his family. I, 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 I can't even imagine not having his input in my life to help, to help me deal with the racism I've had. And oh, wow. I'm quite okay. light skinned. Okay. And, I, and I've, I've had things happen to me where I've been like, so upset about it, like issues of like, experiences of racism where I've been like, Dad, like, this isn't right. And he's like, I know it's not right, but it just, it is what it is. And we've just, it, you can't control anyone else. You can only control your own reaction to it. And that's so difficult because you have to always bite your tongue or or just try and walk away. And it's it's hard to do that, man, when someone's trying to mm. like come at you for, just for being you, mm. for being who you were created to be and, for, and be and carrying God's image with that. Like that's an insult, not just to me, but that's an insult to my creator. That's not cool, man. Like, but you know, but I think it, you know, in response to the question of like, with the link to mental health and stuff, it's interesting with these narratives. Cause like I read the article that you sent me Roger before this call Mm. about, it was about um, that the article was about that mixed race people are more likely to have mental illnesses. I've already, I've always understood mental illness and mental health as two separate things. So mental health is like, we all have mental health and it's either, and we can control how we have good mental health or poor mental health and it can fluctuate depending on circumstances, etc. Mental illness is like diagnosed things, different, mm-hmm. maybe need medication, etc., etc. 
-hmm. Now with that, I was like, that narrative can be so damaging because mm -hmm. actually what it's saying is mm -hmm. if, if you, it, it's saying that, you know, mixed race people are more likely to have mental health issues. For someone who's full white or full Indian or full black, who have the opportunity to be with someone of a different race, that's then going to put in their mind if they've read that to just think, yeah. oh, actually, maybe we shouldn't do this because our kids right. can turn out with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Like For me, being a mixed race person, mm -hmm. that by default, my child will be mixed race, which I'm very happy yeah. about. I'm like, great. They're going to they're going to have a blast like mm -hmm. they're going to have some difficulties, but they are going to know that they were created to be that. And that's beautiful and they get to inherit me it's great but like it's that wow. thing of like it, it, it puts a negative mm. stigma mm. onto mixed race people and it's not to say that we don't have mental health issues because i actually think everyone has mental health issues everybody and does everyone yeah. does no one's no one's like ex like um exempt from that like it's life isn't it now like and it's good that we are able to talk about it mm. but i just think to to have narratives yeah. like that and it's similar with what happened with megan as well of people saying like she ain't black or whatever like who is any however she identifies herself we must respect that whether we agree or not like like with the thing what Anne marie was saying of like in america the definition of how people identify if they're mixed race and they have black in them will be like well they're just black and they won't actually like kamala harris she's indian and black or south asian and and um, her dad's of jamaican heritage but she's like i'm a black woman and mm -hmm. you know I might disagree with that and be like, well, you know, don't disregard your South Asian. But at the same time, if she wants to identify as a black woman, who am I to say don't? And that's not who you are. Like, yeah. and it's that thing of, it's us understanding ourselves as people, who we are and how we want to identify. And then it's us being able to respect how others identify as well. And, mm -hmm. and being, being a learner's mentality. Mm -hmm. as, Can I just piggyback? Yeah, yeah, you know, piggyback off it, sis. Because that, that, that was amazing what you said, sis. Totally amazing. Go on. Sorry. Literally, um, one of the things that you said was um, the problem, like the, the title that they have used, was it mm. mental illness? Yeah. See, that's incredibly problematic. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, yeah. why wow. are we, why are we already, there's already the stigma of just because, um, okay, so, so for example, when you have, when you are, you know, um, when you have, when you have two parents in the same household or two parents that are able to input their different cultures, their kind of you know their way of living and the rest of it when you have that it's 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 good okay mm -hmm. when you don't have that it just it provides a little bit more of a challenge because then you have to actively go out and seek this mm. different kind of culture that that you're a part of and until you do that i can't speak for anybody um everyone has their own experience yeah, yeah. but for me it would be like i would want to learn more about the, the whole like me in a wholesome kind of way like I would want to go out and learn more. But then you've got the other thing of people saying, oh, mixed race girls are crazy. Mixed race people don't know whether they're coming or going. Mixed race people are always confused. You've also got all of those wow. stereotypes that people put yeah. on mixed Dark race people. <laughs> and so when you're opening your mouth to say something, sometimes yeah. in like the school, like in a school environment, I'll go back to there because I can all, I can relate it all back to school. And so it's just like, oh, be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. You're, mi you're mixed race anyway. What are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just wow. like those kind of negative stereotypes that have been systematically put down. Mm. It's just yeah. like, why are we still doing this? It's the so same bad. thing how, listen, it's like the same thing how, um, what, what Megan's going through at the moment. Mm. And they do it with, um, oh, what's her name? I can't remember the, the, the her sister-in-law's name. Ugh. So you've Kate. Kate Middleton. Oh, yes. Yeah. So then what, look how the tabloids have treated Megan. They have both wore, they, they both held their bellies in the same way. There yeah. was a positive spin for one and a negative spin for the other. Come they on. both had um, a gift of like some kind of, some kind of fruit or something. Some avocado. Kind of kind of, yeah. 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 There was a negative spin and a positive spin. Like let's be, like let's really be aware of how we're using our words because our words yeah. are damaging. Oh, we wow. can either bring life or death with our tongue. So mm. when people are giving titles like that and they're so bold to say, oh, mental, illness who are you talking to yeah. you get your words incorrect yeah. <laughs> like yes. i'm not here for it like let's not do that if you're going to speak facts then speak facts but please let's not bracket us as being confused or some kind of like with some kind of illness like no that's not the case yeah let's not do yeah. that I I, I, I I totally on, so the article i'm looking back at the article i sent and it said mixed and mental <laughs> 
And I did the research and I looked at the papers and the first thing I was going to say when Roger asked me about the mental health was that the representation is horrible. And when you when you start to Google mixed race, the first few papers that come up are not encouraging. It's sort of like the same way when you start to Google black mental health, you have all the bad things to be talking about, first mm. of all. Mm-hmm. And that upsets me as a black person and also that has upset me now knowing that i have mixed race i mean family and mm. understanding that it's not all negative for mm. everybody mm-hmm. and the kind of connotations that are put out there because that in itself is harmful as you and San, i mean marie and sandy have already said that mm-hmm. already having that narrative of yeah mixed race people are confused and don't have an identity and don't have this and those. and i've got such a totally different sense having a conversation with you I never would have had that sense having a conversation with my nieces or my sister-in-law because they have been able to establish an identity from parents that love them and remind them that they belong and um, they don't have to take sides. But mm. I have I have been present. Like when I did the research and I saw the first few papers and when I sent the papers to Roger, first of all, there wasn't enough research that was being done. Um, no, nobody is talking about it as much as it should be talked about. And yes, everybody does have mental health problems again they're going at it from the um negative point of view and i think they're talking about it a lot from um with regards to young people and boys especially also the research i have looked that has related to um high school boys in the uk and what they have to go through being mixed race um because of um police brutality and all those things that's why they did talk a lot about mental health but i do totally agree that um what do you call it the narrative is negative and that absolutely upsets me being a mental health practitioner because I'm all for really looking at the resilience and the positive. Mm. Because if we don't talk enough about the positives and the resilience, and that's, that's what my whole research is about anyway, my PhD. If we don't talk about the positives, we are constantly going to roll with these negative narratives and continue to mm-hmm. try to put people in a box or try mm. to categorize them or try to have them take sides or continue to be ignorant about our microaggressions and not want to learn anything and just be comfortable with uh, let them think how they want to think. They're not black, they're not Indian, they're not Chinese, they're not, you know, just continue to put people in a box. And it totally upsets me, like it upsets me so much. It upsets me so much. And I, I, was, I wasn't I was particularly happy when I saw it as well. I'm, I'm not happy about it. And mm-hmm. I'm definitely, in my research, I'm definitely looking to, I mean, I haven't considered the mixed race element as well in talking about resilience. But for me, I think it would be important to add that. And mm. yeah. No, it, it, it's, it's, so it, it's, it, it's, it's so important, guys. Like, you know, what was being said today, because, you know, again, I was open to learn. Like I said, it all started from me going into <laughs> following Amber's <laughs> Instagram <laughs> and getting getting caught up in a, in a, in a whoa, you get, you get these groups here. But the, but the, um, the, 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 the situation is that I've heard things come out of mouths of people around me, you know, and growing up as a child, like, I grew up in a white area, yeah, um, being honest, a suburban area, yeah, and, you know, um, my parents was like this. We went to black, you know, we said black church, you know, over in Handsworth, and then we grew up in, the, you know, in a white area. You know, the usual um, get you out the ghetto, and uh, but yet we bring you back into the ghetto for church. You know, the you know, usual thing we drive in and out. You know, I mean, like some drive-by thing. But um, but ultimately, you know, um, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying so. <laughs> um, so I'm going, I'm going to a black church now. Yeah. But group, but I'm I'm so so I'm 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 the white guy at church, yeah, and I'm the black guy at school, yeah. So that, trust me, that was confusing at at, 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 the, at the best of times, yeah. But when it came to you know establishing your partner, looking at you know, I mean, obviously, I had a lot of choice when it came to um, um, young English ladies. Um, but um, my um, one of my uh, deterrent talk conversations uh, <laughs> was, <laughs> and it's and to be real is. The children will struggle, in in you know what I mean, and 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 it's perception. So this is not just an English concept. I'm mm-hmm. saying it from black people. Yeah, they say don't go outside our community because the children mm-hmm. will suffer in their identity. Yeah, and what I've heard in this conversation here, and I'm, I'm you know, so if I'm gonna get stoned by black people, they're gonna be like, Roger, don't tell them we say that. But I'm afraid we <laughs> have to be honest and have to be real because we're mm-hmm. quick to say, oh, the English are are bad to us because they say this and say that we're going to look at what bad we say yeah? yeah and the real talk we say you know the fundamentals that person for me 
the fundamentals gotta be great character in Christ, everything, all that, and then whatever you like, what shapes you like is 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 is, is neither here or there for me. But the you see, Roger, it's, it's interesting being I mean being African, it's different for me. People be more excited for me to have a white person than a black person. <laughs> yeah. Listen, every time every time anybody have you found a white boy yet? And I'm like <laughs> <laughs> wow I, like, I'm, they cause like they'll be more excited for me to have a, i don't i really don't know why i don't know what the narrative is mm. I, I don't know but it's, it's, it's totally different for me they, they're constantly more i mean open to you exploring or you know and if, well especially for my family they're like yeah your parents don't mind your brother tries to japanese and anyway and i'm like um that's rude don't say that <laughs> but wow. okay <laughs> but it's very i mean Talking about black people, I think it's different for African Caribbean people and African people sometimes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I hear what you say. Now, um, hitting up on, 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 on Sheng, I know the, the, the young ladies have really hit up about the, um, the whole <laughs> confusion thing. And, and Sheng's just been grinning his teeth, nodding his head, going, Amen, Amen, Amen. Yo, it's, it's interesting <laughs> to me listening because I think a lot of the points that have been hit, hit on, and forgive me if I'm wrong in it, but a lot of the points that you guys are hitting on are obviously coming from a female's point of view but obviously as yeah. well coming from a very female um standpoint as in like if you if 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 so like if if i was half um indian half white or i was half irish half jamaican and uh, i was in, i was in your shoes same time same era i think the the experience to me would be a lot different yeah so okay, okay. And, um, so the difference between like genders yeah. So, 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 if it's different for them, uh, 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 Sheng, when it comes to your uh, identity, can you see it easily going? Um, you know, you know, his whole mental health thing. Yeah. Have yeah. you felt like that stigma has been pushed on you? Is it that your combination of 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 Chinese and 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 um, and um, Afro Caribbean is probably seen as oh that's cool we can work you know what I mean it's whatever or is it a case of it's that's been pushed onto yourself oh you don't know who you are now so you have you had that sort of vibe around you not direct conversation but have you had that from black people or anybody around you have they have, have the question said are you are you Chinese or are you who do you identify with what side are you picking um it's been a bit weird you know because um obviously with, with guys it's a lot more of teasing and stuff and then banter and do you know what i mean it's like ah, oh. mm. like I, in school i used to have things like bro can you even see or <sighs> do you know what i mean or you know things like that <laughs> and obviously like because of my boys and stuff and they're saying it, i i get like they're taking the mick out of me but it's also like they're trying it's it's a it's a it's a way of banter as well like, not, yeah, that, it's, yeah, not yeah. that a lot of it should be accepted yeah. But yeah. I, again, I, I, I do kind of yeah. And I, obviously, I grew up thinking like, raw. Okay, do I really look like I can't see? Sometimes, and like even to this day, I still get stuff like that. And um, I think there are wow. negative and positive connotations because a lot of it I, I understand is um, some of it is like microaggression, and some of it is racist and whatever, and some of it is. Um, and mm -hmm. I've had a, like I, I'd say jealousy because it's I've had people come up to me and say stuff like. You think you're sick, you know, because your hair's long, or because your hair's this and that, or you think you're, you think you're nice, or and then let, if I'm if I'm going to what um if I'm going to what Angela's saying as well, and I, correct me if I'm wrong in it, but your family say like, oh, when you're gonna find a white boy, this and that, mm. a lot of it can come down to colorism as well, and the privilege yeah. within yeah, colorism, that, and, oh, if you're fairer yeah. skinned or this and that, or your hair's a bit um fair um yeah. like curly or loose or something like that, or if um. I don't know what else there is like everything around like you know facial features and whatnot and you know what I mean um sort of the another yeah, thing could be is fetishization. Mm. Yeah, I can't even say that fetishization. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. Fetishization. The F word. <laughs> yeah, the F word. But but the F -word. but, 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 but Sheng, Sheng, I, I, and and the thing is, bro. This is the this is the problem that you've you've done what I've done with racism as a child in 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 in, in, in a white school in school because sometimes we've a kind of absorbed when we shouldn't need to absorb 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying you, you've said it's okay to talk about. You know, you can't see. No, I'm saying it's not saying it's okay. You're saying it could be seen as mm. banter. Yeah. Yeah. And and too often, um, and and this is the season to be real about it. We have bantered it wrong as men. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, bro, it's straight wrong. It's straight wrong to 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 pull on your things. Colorism is wrong. You know what I'm saying? I think and I think it, I think that's I think that is down to like you know stereotypes and the stigmas about being being a man and just trying to you know, put on a brave face and you know what I mean don't yeah. don't go into battles unless you really have to swing it out and stuff and it's yeah. just like oh it's, it's mine why are you why are you crying over little things like that for yeah, yeah, yeah. or do you know what I mean like so we've kind of just kind of put on like a you know what I mean but but that but that but that but Angela, but actually, um, it's just not healthy. Sorry, An- Angela, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's not it, what you said there, right there, uh, sis, uh, Sandy. Yeah, um, Angela, going to yourself now. Looking at people going into breaking points, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh. You see a lot of people get into breaking points. Do a question to yourself. Do microaggressions as, uh, uh, as we're not saying Sheng is ready to jump off the cliff or tomorrow far from it, you know what I'm saying? But do yeah. microaggressions as he's talking because some people they absorb, and the problem is it, yeah. it Sheng, you absorb it, but your brother might not. But yeah, you, I'm, you, I'm to be honest, yeah. honestly, I'll be me being open, open and honest right now. I probably haven't addressed it, you know. I, I, yeah, cool. It probably yeah. has affected me deeply, and I don't yes. know. Maybe yeah. I'm just. I'm, I'm not going to have to in- book a therapy session for you, thing. Yeah, get counseling. <laughs> it's a good I'm, thing. I'm load it. I'm load all the cover. <laughs> do, do I come across as like? Everything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about that. Stop making me cry. It's cool now. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's a that's a whole subject in itself. No, do you know what though? Do you know what's helped? Do you know what's helped? Yeah, like going back to what you're saying, it has helped um having both my parents that I've kind of installed like the culture into me. Obviously not yeah. necessarily the language, but installed the culture into me and said like this is where you're from. And I've yeah. it's good that I've mm. been to both countries and I've I've seen like where mm. both my parents have grown mm-hmm. up. It's like mm-hmm. okay, and then I've seen the unification and the, the, the between them both and I've seen how they've mm-hmm. acted towards each other and thank God like even my black side are very like I said they're very in tune with Chinese culture and my Chinese side all grew up in Birmingham at one point so they've you know have, they've got Indian friends they've got Pakistani friends they've got black friends they've got African friends this yeah. and that etc etc so I haven't I haven't really seen That's good. racism directly in my family but I've seen a lot of pride in my cultures and so like it, it, it helps me so when people say stuff like oh, can you even see this and that or oh, yeah, Chinese this or whatever I'm like prof well your clothes are probably from China, so you know, take that off. Or you know what I mean? It just helped me, it helped me clap back or stuff from that. It helped me yeah. to be like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm blessed. I, I love the culture. Like, whether I'm Indian or whether I'm like Slovakian or whether I'm Chinese or Black yeah. or whatever it is, mm-hmm. like I could be like, well, this is why I'm part of my culture. So right. you can tease me all you want, but mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, you know I mean, oh, crazy. No, no, that, that, that's absolutely crazy, bro. And and you know what, bro? This is this is so, you know, like I'm getting hit up from here from different conversation. I'm having. I mean, uh, having different people come um, hitting me, hit me up, and go, yeah, man, oh my gosh, Da-da-da-da. it's really fantastic, guys. And yeah. something that 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 was said, um, um, and I want to reiterate, yeah, st- stigma. But so, yeah. Anne Marie, you ki- you kick in, and I'm gonna, uh, yeah, go on, go go go. Sorry. Okay, so um, what I wanted to share was that there's a lady called um, Dr. Maria PP Root, and there is actually a bill of rights for people of mixed heritage. If you type into Google Bill of Rights for Mixed Heritage, you will find it. And it says, I have the right not to justify my experience in this world. I have the right to identify myself differently than strangers expect me to identify. I have the right to create a vocabulary to communicate about being multiracial and multi-ethnic. It's got a whole, it's got quite a few of the I have the right. And I think it's a very, very very important bill of rights for mixed race people to be aware of because you know what when people come at you with all their nonsense and all their ignorance and whatever it may be Mm. you go back to this bill of rights and it's just like well hold on a second Mm. i can identify myself differently and that's okay Mm. yeah Yeah. you get what i mean so i I think this bill of rights exists i'm like (laughs) where's this been my whole life (laughs) does does that mean we can create our own language or something (laughs) yeah there's absolutely (laughs) love I think there's something like Bible. Oh, and it's really, really useful. And when you read it back as a mixed race person, you're just like, yeah. hold on a second, this makes sense. I don't yeah. have to I don't have to argue with you about who I am. 
That's yeah, okay. Yeah. I choose to identify who I choose to identify as. And that's that. Off, take off the burden, isn't it? It's yeah. validating you to take that off and not yeah. hold that. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So I think, um, yes, the Bill of Rights for mixed race, for mixed heritage. Okay. That's crazy. Look. No, no, this is beautiful, guys, because the reality sh scenario is is stigmas that I've been told. Yeah, mm. you know what I'm saying? You guys are helping me break, you know, Angela, you know, when she sent me the my articles, I was like, yeah, that that's what I, I work in care work. And there's an assumption when you see a, a West Indian parent and an English mom. They were like, oh, here we go again. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, 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 I'm being, and this is in the professional environment of taking care of children who, who and you're like, oh gosh, we're going to, you know what I mean? We, 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 it's seen as, 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 as a problem that feeds the care system. Yeah. And, and this is, this is, this is real. But the thing is, what's important, what you guys are raising is in whatever aspect you are, whether it's a black child that need two inputs from parents. And this is why people have to take their parenting quite, no, not quite serious, very serious. Absolutely. Yeah, because the children don't have identity issues. It's okay to say, "Oh, we're gonna leave it to the church." Yeah, but if we had to show is, and we can mourn about church. But the key thing is, is a mum and dad has to put identity into the children and make them proud of who they are, yeah. and then look at how they interact with other cultural groups. Yeah, and interact in a better and more positive way. And it's what these conversations are real important for me because I know as a black person that we have unfortunately assumptions of Amiri, of Sheng, because mm. Sheng, you're black bro, you're from, you're, you're from the ends, and and, <laughs> and and you play football with a bunch of black guys, yeah? So you're, you're black, but the reality show is, that's not fair and that's not right, yeah? yeah? You're not black, yeah? Mm. But, that, 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 but you are at the same time, it's in the weird <laughs> sense, you know what I mean? But the reality show is that we treat you as, uh, as, uh, as black old Amiri, the girls them, we go, oh, she thinks she's nice because she's, you know what I mean, got a bit more, you know, a bit lighter than me. And it adds a colorism foolishness and the hair foolishness. And, um, you know, and they get all that. And, and they get the And people don't realize is that the microaggression that, hap that happens on Nelson. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nelson. Mm -hmm. Sheng. <laughs> and Sheng um, might hit his chest and fall off. But mm -hmm. that happens to your son, Sheng, yeah? Mm -hmm. That might not hit him that same way. And this is why I have to look at that. If what I can take, my sons might not be able to take. So I have to stand up and say, yo, dude, that's wrong. Because I'd say, you, cause you said it to me, doesn't mean you can say it to my children or to other people. R wrong is wrong. And this is the beauty of, the beauty of today. We can, talk, we can talk out our experiences. Um, I know, guys, we just enjoyed this conversation. And, and, and I know I have to come to a conclusion, man. Um, um, but, I, but I have learned an amazing bit. Now, I want to uh, I want to get one little bit of comment from yourselves here, guys. Just like almost on a positive note. I'm I'm, I'm looking back at my comments. I'm, I'm not even... A, I know we have to do a part two this somehow, yeah? But because yeah. the comments I'm having... So it's like, yo, get me on. Yo, I want it. You know, it's great and fantastic. Because I think it's a season where people can understand our journeys yeah it's yeah. a season where people can go oh that really happened to you yeah i get it you know what i'm saying and it's a time to connect you know what i mean and yeah. for me as a christian we don't try to connect that way because we try to sweep under pain sweep um, under under hurt we try to sweep under oh don't worry um um to drop some olive oil on it we'll beat and it, and it goes away you know what i'm saying you know and, and and the reality show is that you know what sometimes it's just able to talk and have that conversation yeah mm -hmm. and yeah something that Angela said to to Sheng, and you know it's so funny ain't no man going yo I'm, uh, can i book a session for a uh, therapy session we don't do that in our hood. yo that's weakness no, you know she ain't gonna go put that on, on radio or on youtube you mad like nah i'm, I'm good you know what I mean? but it's something that men will that's a whole other subject itself men and uh, <laughs> signing up for, for the importance of therapy the culture is not here in the uk it's something that we want to encourage as well being able, it's good to talk as i say but um, yeah. um that is changing though that, no. A lot of people now are a lot more aware of navigating awkward emotions that they are feeling mm -hmm. and navigating it better because what's happening is mm -hmm. there's a lot of broken people that are not admitting that they're broken. So then mm -hmm. they're raising, they, they, they want to raise wholesome children, but they're dealing with their own demons. They're dealing oh, with their wow. own past traumas that they have wow. not dealt with. Yeah. And so wow. that in itself causes problems with our society. Yeah. 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 
And when we're talking about um, therapy, a lot of the reasons why people will like in 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 like black culture, um, with like even when I've mentioned it to my mom, and um, like I had to do therapy um, last year because of something that happened. And when I was mentioning it to my mom, she was just like, um, and obviously the older generation are gonna get this. Are you not praying? Do you read the Bible? You yeah. know? And I was getting all of that and I'm there like, mom, like, I'm a replacement like, for those exactly. things. Exactly. I'm just like, there's something else that needs to happen. I don't have the tools and the resources right now, yeah. you know, that I need to seek something else because mm. what I know and what I understand right now is not working for me right now. It's not okay. And so people will think, oh, when you do therapy, you're broken. You haven't found God. Where's Where's God? You know, he's still there. You must be crazy. You know, wow. you're weak or your life's a mess. But the reason why people go to therapy is, is, to, is to adjust it, like to adjust to adulthood, is for yeah. self-care, is to, for extra support, like self-discovery, coping and learning like new skills, yeah. processing past events, improving relationships. Like there's just mm. so much more to it. And people put on a negative thing, like therapy means you need help because everything's going wrong. No, that's no, that, that's not true. And I think that's a stigma that is really crippling our society, our community, uh, our community. You ask a therapist if they have a therapist. They do. Most yeah, of them do. I have a therapist. Therapy is important. Therapy. Exactly wow. because they therapy. <laughs> of communication yeah. and making sure that you know what if there's something that isn't like I don't quite understand how I'm supposed to feel right now I'm feeling a little bit into myself a little bit isolated I need someone else to tell me how to deal with this whatever this feeling is I need someone yeah. else to step in and help me navigate out of this space it needs to make sense you yeah. know no. there's a lot of like life will throw a lot of that I'm not preaching but life will throw <laughs> a lot of things your way and a lot of the time we will try to ourselves and we're not going to talk about it because we're ashamed or whatever it mm, may be mm. but I am saying mate if you need to talk to somebody go and talk to somebody what yeah. we need to do as adults is take accountability for whatever trauma or for whatever hurt that we are noticing and do something about it progress and heal let us heal you get it I'm just saying listen, we had this conversation last week and two weeks ago. We've been talking about it and we we had a whole podcast on it. So you are on the right track, Maria. I told you you're on the right track. Like wait, this is this is a narrative that Roger is pushing. This is a narrative that we are pushing. We're yeah. constantly talking about people getting therapy. We need right? to let's heal. And I'm here if anybody wants to have a conversation. I'm here. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's, that, 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 that's big, and, and you know what, guys? You know, this is this is uh, uh, Amory. That, that, that was real special what you just said there, still. Yeah, and I appreciate and I, and I appreciate the passion of it, Amory, because you know, you've seen fallen people around you when you see people being destroyed yeah. because of not being able to, and the passion that I have because I see young men mm -hmm. crumble and not deal with things, and we escapism through, unfortunately through drugs through misbehavior and you escape through the wrong areas it'll come out somewhere and you know when you yeah. got that, that 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 thing where um you're full and they're trying to stop the league they put the whole and they'll cover something and it comes out somewhere else and whatever and then too much in life we're just trying to do this now uh guys this is a very 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 special show to me and i and i and i, and, 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 and I appreciate it and we had a beautiful um exhortation from um Anne marie right at the end still you know <laughs> well, I, I don't know if i, I don't know if i if i said oh you know the one said get down to the altar right now 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 oil is free tonight you know but uh but no no that's no everything's special so um um sheng you know uh um, and we, and it, it, it's smiling, but we, we're not far from putting him on blast anyway. So yeah, Shane, you know, just having having this conversation here today because I know it's like a, it's like a conversation because we, we've hit some beautiful nations and there's a lot of backgrounds here in this conversation. How how has it made you feel having this conversation today? Um, and you know what? I was gonna I was gonna say something to end on as well. Like, um, do you know like whether you're from if you're from if you're from um, a mixed heritage sort of background? and you have like complications with who you are or, or whether you've grown up with like strong parenting and uh, you you are very you know proud about where you come from or whether it is you don't know much about where you come from or you have you know you've had like negative stereotypes forced up upon you based on you know where your parents are from ultimately 
wherever you go or whoever you end up with or whoever you talk to, you're going to be the bridge for those experiences with other people. So, like, for example, like, uh, Megan and Harry, like, I know, look, I know that Harry kind of, like, he's, he's in tune with, like, a lot of different cultures and stuff. He may not be, like, fully in the depths of it and whatnot, but Megan will ultimately be the experience of black people for him or the bridge between like you know I mean, his culture and understanding black culture and mm. you know what i mean and mm. and vice versa harry will be that kind of for like megan especially not growing up a, a, a lot with her dad who is white and you know what i mean and and totally different backgrounds of where they come from and like like with sandy or with marie or with me or whatever i've i've a lot of the times I've been the bridge between black my, my black friends or my white friends or my Indian friends or Pakistani friends and, and I've said like yo this is how we do things in um, yeah. when I go yeah. to my grandma's or when I go yeah. to my dad's or you yeah. know I'll, yeah. or in Chinese culture or this is what we do on Chinese New Year or this and that or do you know what I'm saying or mm-hmm. have you, even even to the even to the small points of like this is how we use chopsticks right <laughs> or little things like that so if whether you or it could or on the flip side of it it could be like yo you're dealing with this type of racism this this is how i've experienced it this is how i deal with it and you know what i mean this is how or or you could be the advocate or the spokesperson for like teaching your friends about you know what i mean um why you shouldn't say certain things about people in this culture and that culture and this and that as well mm. so um that's something to take away and be proud of and always like kind of remember like you in your experiences um, no matter what experience you have, should not be thrown under the bus. It should be like spoken about in where, where whatever situation you go into. Love that. Big, big. Bro, lo- loving that, man. Loving that. Um, Sandy, you know, um, uh, you got anything to close off on? I think for me, I think the big thing I'd probably want to just end on is that, like, at the end of the day, when you look at identity as a whole, we can either look at our identities as just existing. Or we can look at ourselves as being created. I like to go with the thing that we've been created and actually created by a beautiful God who has placed his very image in each and every one of us. Whether you're black, white, Indian, mixed, Chinese, Japanese. I'll go for all the countries in a minute if I don't stop. But God's placed his image in every single person on earth, past and present and future. Now that, we all carry that. We're created. We're not just existing. We're not random. We're created with purpose and a plan. And I look at my own experience, because that's the only experience I can speak of, but seeing my two parents and their journey of how God has completely transformed their life, brought them together, and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. It's not coincidental. That clearly has a purpose and a plan that was given by a creator. All the people created with his image. And that's the one thing I want to end on, because to know that you're created gives you purpose Mm -hmm. and it gives you that belonging. Mm-hmm. And and it's a belonging that isn't temporary just for this life, but it's eternal. Oh, and I just hope I hope everyone listening to this, whether it's after that, if, if they're listening live or if they're listening on YouTube, like that everyone will get to know the creator because only when we do that and get to know God himself who created us is when all the problems and the confusion and the nastiness of racism will actually just completely go. Because we all have to go on that journey of either repentance or forgiveness. And you can't do that on your own. And I think I just hope that from this conversation, we all can continue, like like Nelson said, um, Sheng said, having those conversations and being educators in our circles and spheres right. and being the bridge of reconciliation. That's exactly what Christ did for the world. Okay. And I think we just got to do that. <laughs> we're just gonna we're, we're just gonna have a um, small break to hand out the offering right now. We've got tea and coffee in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying. Why you mean, bro? Tea, the morning tea, coffee, some carrot cake, bro. Got some slices ready for me. Hitting, hitting the nail on the head, you know, ending saying. church properly. You know? Right, properly. Come saying. on, telling you, I, I, free sister. I, I, I definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely a PKs are coming through right about now. Still, you know, gonna <laughs> 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 meet up in the foyer. Yeah, 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 yeah,
about their experience as well. So we're, we're, we're going to get them on because that, you know what I mean? And, you know, so so I'm, I'm getting some positive feedback. So I'm, I'm like looking at, because this is just beautiful. And it's beautiful to explore this. This has not yeah. gone down the road that I thought it would go down the road. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we, yeah. and you know, so this is beautiful. Sorry, Anne-Marie, do you want to, how, how, how you, how you want to close off? Just, just a quick one to close then. It would be, if we're unsure of how to approach or treat people, mm. let's just go back to the basics of human kindness. Yeah. Let's just go back to treating people with love, mm. being patient with people, being mm. understanding, not presumptuous, not mm. doing, and not, not forcing our thoughts or mm. how we think people should act on them. Just be kind. Let's be kind humans. Let's be patient. Let's be loving. And that's it. Sweet. It's not. It doesn't have to be so complicated. No, it really doesn't. It's it's it's, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the door yeah. is closed now. I'm good. <laughs> no, that, that that that's blessed, man. Um, um, Angela, yeah. any 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 thoughts? Um, close enough. Uh, yeah, I've just been grateful to sit back and listen and learn. Um, uh, because um, I definitely don't have the experience you've had, but it's it's been beautiful listening to the diversity and moving away from the negative narratives and just enjoying the conversation really. And as Marie said, the basis of it really is love and taking back in on what everybody else has said. I mean, honestly, I constantly say that our narrative of love is flawed. And if we go by our understanding of love, it'll be flawed by biases and microaggressions and lies and, you know, the understanding of what the system or our community or environment has taught us. But if we understand the love of God and he teaches us how to love, um, we wouldn't have so many problems the way we do now and we'll see each other as just like creations of God and that's important. But I love that everybody's like, you know, I'm not taking sides, I'm who I am and this is this is where I'm from and this is what I love about myself and yeah, I'm all for it. I've, I've just been here to learn today. So thank you. Thank you for educating me. I'm really grateful to you all. Yo, uh, I'm in the same boat of Angela, man, and, and I'm blessed. I, I want us to change how people. I want us to love. I don't wanna. I want. I, I don't wanna push. Um, um, I don't wanna make a set of people seem as the 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 only aggressors out there. You know what I mean? Because we sometimes yeah. we can get caught up and just point y'all English people. You are the wickedest people in the world. But there's things that we need to improve on as well as mm -hmm. people, and we need to retrospectively look at how we talk, how we talk about. Um, our, our, our mixed race cousins because we got mixed race cousins how we treat them hopefully people are listening to this conversation and having a good look at how they treat them yeah they're not mm, black yeah. yo they're not this yo they're not that yo check yourself and this is a beautiful beautiful, beautiful mm. conversation and i've been humbled guys and i appreciate that i appreciate i, I appreciate the the, 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 true, the true color and something that somebody said um I, I read a lot of i listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of things you know theologically and and whatsoever and the, deconst the decolonization of christianity and um something that that's something we, that we can all smile at is the reality show is that the middle east at the time of the Bible being written, there was actually, forget Northern Europe, forget what's been given to us, yeah? The writer show is, if, the, the, the spectrum of browns <laughs> in, the, in that time, exactly. that, you, know what I mean? you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it just makes it for a beautiful, beautiful, I know we've been influenced by media, but from the Eurocentric element, or whatever, but the beauty of, 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 of Christianity being a, um, something of colour, the gospel, if you actually study doubt, the so-called Doubting Thomas, he walked all the way, preached the gospel all the way into India. You know what I'm saying? And bought the gospel within a into Asia. We look at the, um, the Ethiopian eunuch. All these things we casually talk about and don't realise that the gospel has reached these places before even it reached England itself. Yeah? yeah. So 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 it's really important that people of colour have a major part to 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 to, to play in 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 um, the fact that basically Christianity is, and it's important that the, the disciples recognise. When they saw a little bit about cultural issues, they was like, hey, nah, 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 mate. Make sure that everyone get fed and they were on yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was an example of, of when they see injustice, they said, sorry, you, 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 oh. from that film, you come here. You make sure that them young ladies, them Greek, them Greek young ladies, make sure they get taken care of as if they were due and even mm -hmm. and we have isms and schisms that we need to deal with and my encouragement yeah. to everyone is that 
we here and we all here are learning and it's just good to talk that's something that's really special to me it's good to talk and, and i've learned guys enough today um sheng i know you only had half an hour for us today i did warn sheng that 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 this this, this, this conversation is going to go way 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 over you know what i'm saying or whatever so yeah i know it will because <laughs> because because things have to have to go off but i hope that everyone i'm glad when you're having fun man <laughs> yeah man yeah man yeah man. but but i appreciate this conversation guys and i hope that anybody who's watching this back on youtube or listening back on on, on, on Affinity Extra because this will be on playback as well later on dates and whatever but they listen to this conversation and this will sprout on conversations that will be will make Christianity into a beautiful a beautiful thing that not only respects us as Christians but also respects our colour our cultures mm -hmm. and, and who we are as well you know what I'm saying so guys enough love everyone I can't believe I got to end this conversation but guys I've got to say no. bye to everyone man you know what I'm saying and, and enough love and you know we'll chat in the next couple of days I'll be like yo man this is crazy man but no the YouTube guys will be ready and the guys subscribe please we're going to be putting out content like this we'll do follow up content on this on the subject because I'm getting messages about different things about this and enough love to everyone man and thanks again guys yeah bless you man yeah bye guys bye 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 yeah guys that was a special 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 visit us for updates and shows at affinityextra.co.uk 